So far on my channel, I've featured several completed ships and you've seen the Roma at least partway through its construction. So I thought it'd be quite nice to show you what one of these kits looks like at the very beginning. Well, mostly at the very beginning. I have a tendency to immediately construct the hull as soon as these ships arrive. So other than that, this kit is unstarted. What I'll show you in this video is the base kit is a trumpeter kit again and then a flyhawk super detail upgrade kit and a pontos wooden deck kit this kit is by no means a new arrival for me it's been sitting on my shelf for quite a long time roughly five years already actually i bought a whole lot of kits in one go imported them at one time and i like to keep a bit of a stock going and it's actually gotten to the point now where this is the last kit that I have on my shelf to build. And that's because the hood that I bought has been delayed due to COVID. It's still stuck in Hong Kong. So depending on what happens with the shipping for my hood kit, this Alabama kit will probably be my next build. If the hood arrives before I finish the Roma, I'll build the hood before this kit. I'd like to have two British ships before I have three American ships. And especially since the South Dakota class, which Alabama is one example, do kind of look fairly similar to the North Carolina class, of which I already have one. Start by looking at the deck pieces. First up, we have this forward part of the deck. Some planking detail. But the bow here is very lacking in detail. Just some basic molded chains and then absolutely devoid of detail for the plating for this metal section of deck on the bow. That's a bit disappointing. The center portion of the deck is very basic. There are only two hatches on it. There are some basic planks for the deck. The sides of the piece are completely smooth, completely devoid of detail. That's also a bit disappointing. The stern section of the deck is much the same as the forward and middle section. Just basic planking on the deck, a couple of hatches, and then a section of metal plating on the deck, which is completely devoid of detail. The detail on the hull is also very basic. Both the upper and lower hull are completely smooth, apart from some very basic detailing. You have the keels, and then a little inset where there is the armor belt. Other than that, it is also completely smooth, apart from this little boom, I think, which is supposed to be at the back. The ship does have a rather interesting hull shape with this rather large cutout. This is actually historical. It's not a molding defect. It's supposed to look like that. It is a rather strange looking part of the stern to me, but apparently that is how it actually really was. Now let's take a look at the A sprue. So the A sprue you can see has the side panels for the pieces of the superstructure. These are the walls that get stuck onto those larger pieces. So this indicates to me that they are not using the newer slide molding technique since it's just a much older two-part die, which should explain why the pieces have considerably less detail than what I would expect of a more modern kit. The detail that is on these pieces is very basic and I will be happy to replace them with bits of photo etch. The B sprue has more pieces of the superstructure and some pieces for the hull as well, including the propellers and propeller shafts. Once again, very basic detail on these parts. You have two C sprues. These contain components for the primary and secondary armaments. The turrets look pretty basic. The sides of these turrets are completely smooth. The additional pieces for the walls to add detail. More indications that this is just a two part mold. There's no sliding action that allows you to put on these additional details directly into the single part. The secondary turrets are molded in, in three pieces and will need to be glued together. You get two D sprues. These are anti aircraft guns. As is common with plastic anti aircraft guns, they are out of scale. Those barrels look far too thick. And these should be replaced with photo edge parts. There are also some Kali floats, some mounts for anti aircraft guns, the 40mm Boer Force anti aircraft guns, which will probably also be replaced with photo edge, and a few boats and anchors. On the E sprue, there are more anti aircraft guns. These are 20mm guns and they look really out of scale. Those look quite horrible, actually, definitely need to replace them. Some very low detail blast bags for the main guns. That's quite sad. And 
gun barrels in both the adjustable and fixed positions. You get two of these sprues. There is no F sprue, so we move on to the H sprue. The H sprue has more deck pieces for the superstructure and some more of the superstructure walls and what looks like part of the funnel. There isn't an R sprue, so we move on to the J sprue. J sprue is also more superstructure pieces. Looks like the funnel, some more propellers for the hull, and some shielding for the anti-aircraft guns. On the K sprue, we have plastic molded cranes, which will be replaced with photo etch because those look horrible, and the catapult as well, along with some searchlights and radar pieces, which are also going to be replaced with photo etch and yet more walls for the superstructure. The last two sprues of the plastic kit are these clear plastic aircraft kits. It's very nice that they're in clear plastic. It means you can have a clear cockpit once you've painted the aircraft up. I'm glad that they did do it in clear. I'll be replacing the structs on the floats with photo etch and the propeller will also be replaced with photo etch, I would imagine. This should make quite a nice little plane. You get two of these sprues. Included with the kit, you get a very basic decal kit. It just has the US flags and naval ensign and some roundels for the aircraft. And of course, if you so desire, you get a plate onto which you can mount the base of the kit so that you can build it in a waterline configuration. As always, you'll get an instruction manual, which looks like a pretty sort of standard trumpeter instruction manual, um, featuring common hallmarks like putting the very first step that you need to complete at the very end. And you get a painting guide in typical trumpeter fashion. I don't think this is going to be a very difficult camouflage to paint. The superstructure on the ship is quite small and there are a lot of flat surfaces to line it up against. So while the lines look all wavy and everything, I don't think it'll be such an issue to translate them onto the ship because the surfaces are quite flat. So that should actually make this fairly easy to paint despite what looks like a more complicated camo scheme. And these are the paints that are recommended for this kit. Pretty basic. After what we've just seen in the plastic kit, I don't suppose it will come as any surprise that I'm very glad to have a super detail kit for the Alabama. The only question is, is this kit sufficiently detailed? Because sometimes you get pretty low detail detail kits. So let's take a look. As usual, we have a set of instructions number of sprues on it and parts available look uh, quite promising. On the A sprue we have photo etch for 20mm anti-aircraft guns. On the B sprue we have a nice plate for the top of a main turret along with lots of additional detail pieces for what look like the secondary turrets. The C sprue has plates for the other two main turrets and more ladders and what look like rangefinder and radar pieces so that's good these look like holders for the boats i would guess and walkways along with smaller little radars that's some pretty good detail there and here we have some rather detailed looking doors that's a lot better than what's molded onto the plastic some hatches as well no idea what these little things are for, but judging by the number of them, um, I guess that's got something to do with anti-aircraft guns. Uh, these are like deck plates for the superstructure, adding in some metal plating that was definitely missing on the plastic parts, and some nice gratings for walkways and things like that. That looks quite good. More plates to go on decks showing metal plating. That's really good. You can see that this photo etch kit is really trying to make up for the rather poor detail on the plastic kit. That would be the cover on top of the funnel, walkways going around the funnel. There's a, a lot going on there. Yet more detail for the decks. Detail to go in the pits for the 40mm guns. These look like hatches that will go in the deck. Better staircases so we can cut out those horrible plastic Aztec steps. Some railing, it's quite nice. This is a good piece, I'm glad to see that. I don't know why they couldn't have just molded this pattern directly into the plastic of the decking, but at least I have a nice photo etch plate to replace it with, including some nice detail for where the anchor chains will go, and a proper crane instead of that horrible 
plastic chunk and then there are spools for the cables that's good uh, the other side we have the catapult for the aircraft more detailing for decks and some pretty large staircases i think these rings go inside the pits for the 40 millimeter guns and then hold the ammunition clips and then these are like baskets that you fold along with i suppose these are the structures that you use to attach the basket to the ship the last photo etched sprue is mostly railings and these are inserts for the carly floats along with covers for hatches which are quite nice and that would be an updated wave break so that it's in a nice scale that's much better I'm glad they provided that and these i would guess are life rafts and there's a piece of deck for the stern which has the same detail as the bow section good i think it desperately needed those pieces the detail kit also came with brass and resin parts in these little boxes i had removed them because they were quite compact and i didn't want to cram them into such a small space and damage them let's take a closer look at the parts for the 40 millimeter anti-aircraft guns there are four photo edge pieces like this which contain the parts for the splinter shield and base of the gun and then there are five different resin and brass components have these round discs which form the base followed by these structures for the left and right dual barrel gun mounts then you have these resin pieces which are the back portion of the gun and brass barrels that plug into the front of these resin pieces these resin pieces have holes already in the front of them so you don't have to try and drill a miniature hole to fit these photo etch pieces and you just slip them into the front of those parts to make the full gun staying with the anti-aircraft guns there are these bases for the 20 millimeter guns the guns themselves are just photo etch so this is just a single resin part for the 20 millimeter guns then we have the secondary armament the five inch guns there's a complete resin replacement part as you saw in the plastic kit these parrots came in three separate pieces that needed to be glued together they looked very low detail it's very nice to have these replacement parts in a much nicer higher detail resin and they're also replacement barrels and brass the catapult also in addition to its photo etch has a number of detail parts so they provide you with a different base these circles are just the bases onto which you stick the catapult and then this is some of the internal workings of the catapult i think these are the pistons which drive the catapult forward and then they also provide you with some tubing and what look like little gas cylinders along with some more little small detail components the kit also provides you with brass replacement parts for the masts this gives you a much more in scale looking mast that was also strong enough to handle rigging that's also very appreciated as you saw with the deck it was pretty low detail so they provide you with a whole lot of hatches so there's photo etch parts for the top of these boxes but these little resin pieces provide you with the sides of the hatches that go onto the deck and they have two sizes and some detail parts for mooring equipment bollards and such are also included for the main turrets they provide you with gun barrels unfortunately there are no blast bags included with this kit i think uh, replacement blast bags would have been very welcome considering how low detail the ones are that come with the kit but at least we have good quality barrels improved detail on the cardi floats also provided the base of these is a piece of photo etch and then it's this more detailed resin for the sides these i'm not exactly sure what they are but they look like gas cylinders and they have a little structure that you can build these into and place them around the ship and then things do start to get a bit extreme we have here it took me a while to figure out what these were but these two little things those are the propeller shafts for the little aircraft on the ship the long end gets slid into the plastic body of the aircraft and on the short little end you stick the propeller and the last piece in this detail kit is this little thing which is the base for the main crane at the back of the ship the last part of this kit that i want to show you is the wooden deck kit this is a pontos kit the main feature here is the wooden deck already in the appropriate color so that's the center and forward section and then you also get an aft section 
Pontos also provides an improved anchor chain and some decals with the name of the ship, the ship's number, and some loading markers for the waterline. So that brings us to the end of the video. I have shown you all the components that will go into the construction of the Alabama. Basic verdict is that the plastic kit is very low detail, which is very disappointing because I did think it was a fairly modern model. However, the detail upgrade kit by Flyhawk is very detailed and looks like it will be able to easily make up for the deficiencies of the base kit. Hopefully this video has given you a good idea as to what goes into building these ships, at least from the parts point of view. Hope it was informative and that you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.